Hey there, welcome back. This is part 19 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. If you'd like to check out my previous videos in the series, make sure to click on the card above or click on the link in the description below. So in this video, we will integrate our test with Jenkins. So we'll set up a new Jenkins job, install our JUnit reporting and run test in Jenkins. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So the first thing we'll do is actually install the JUnit reporter. So this will be used for our reporting in our Jenkins. So to do that, we'll simply do npm install and this JUnit reporter command here. So I'm going to head over to VS Code and then just paste this over here, hit enter. I'll be back once this is installed. Okay, so our JUnit reporter is installed now. Now let's take a look at how we can integrate it with uh, our configuration. So what we'll do is in our reporter, we currently have LR, we're just going to add JUnit and then add this output directory too. I'm just going to copy this and then head back to VS Code and over here just search for our reporter and okay so we have our earlier here I'm just going to add another one which is for our JUnit and the output directory can be the root directory so that's fine. What we'll do here is also go all the way up make sure we have our search JS which is fine and then before running a test, like before we were running a test on browser stack, I'm just going to change that to right now just run it locally. Wait, if I can just find my services. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this and then comment this one out for now. And then change this to Selenium standalone. This is just for right now. We're going to switch it back to browser stack. I just want to make sure once we run this, it actually works. So I'll just do npm wtio. Okay, so our test ran and if you noticed, it actually generated the JUnit report over here. But we don't want it to be generating over here in our root directory. Instead, what we should be doing is generating it in our report folder. So what I'm going to do is go back to our uh, output directory here and just add report and then just save this. So what will happen now is if I just delete these two and then run it again I want the whole test but up until it will generate the reports and there you go so it generated this report folder and it added these two files there. So I'm going to stop our test Okay, so this is what we want. Now in our Jenkins, we're going to point it to this report folder so that it can pick up all the JUnit reports. All right, so this is good. Now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is change this, remove this Linium standalone, change it back to browser stack, and then save this. Okay, so this is ready. And now what we have to do is go back to our Chrome. And I'm going to close this. Now we will create our new Jenkins job. So let's do that. So I'm going to click on create a job here. Then we will name something um, what would be our job name. So I'll name it WDIO and we're going to click on freestyle project then click OK. Here you will have you will see multiple options which is the general tab, source code management, build triggers, build environment and build and post build. So what we want to focus on is first this source code management over here you will notice that we have this git option so this was installed when we did our git installation as part of our jenkins configuration all right so you will see that there is a repository url that we need to add so what i did was all the code that we created so far i've pushed it on our git repository which is over here so it's part of the automation bro and under that i've created the web driver io tutorial by the way, this is publicly accessible, so you can uh, access this URL, which is also going to be in the description below. And then you can come in here and clone this. So what I will do right now is do HTTPS, copy the URL, and then just paste it here. So if you want, you can create your own repository, put the code there, and then just add the um, Git URL and put it in the repository URL here. And for credentials, you will see multiple options. Right now, I have none. What you can do is to add Jenkins. And then you will have different options. You can add credential by username password or through SSH. So I will do through username password here. So I'm going to add my 
the GitHub username and password. So I'll do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so my credentials are added here. So if I click on this, you can see the username and the password that I added. All right, so I'm gonna add that over here. And one thing to notice here that you shouldn't be seeing any error in red over here. Let's say if I do something wrong here, it will throw me an error. Well, there you go. So you shouldn't be seeing something like this. It should be without any errors. Okay, once you see that, then the next thing to focus is which branch you wanna build. In my case, I'm building the master branch, so that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna head over to the build step. Now in the build step, I'm gonna add that, um, since I'm using Windows, I'm gonna add Windows batch command. And what I'm gonna do here is first install our packages. So I will do npm install. And once our packages are installed, what we can do the next step, which is to actually run our test. So we were running our test using npxwdio. So we would do, keep this. However, if you notice in our, when we were running our browser stack, we added this environment variable, which was basically, let me pull that up all right now. So, which was actually this browser stack username and browser stack key. So we need to provide this to Jenkins so that it knows what the username and key are for our browser stack. So let's do that. So before that, I'm just gonna save this. And if you notice, once it's saved, you're gonna see this new project created over here. All right, so now I'm gonna head over to the Jenkins over here. So click on manage Jenkins and in the configuration, do configure system. All right, so what you're gonna do is scroll down until you see the global environment variable, which are these, and then do add variable, and then just add in the browser stack, a username and browser stack key. So for example, let me just go back to VS Code, copy this username, and then head back. I'm gonna paste this, add in my username, and then same thing, I'm gonna add another one, and then do browser stack key, oops, key. And then you can add in your value here, same thing, you can add in your value here. Once if this is done, just save this. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, and then I'll head back over to our Jenkins project. Okay, so I've added my browser stack key and username in the global configuration. Now what we're gonna do is uh, click on configure here, and so this time what we have is npm install which will install the package and then npxwdio to run the test. So actually this is fine. I'm going to save this and try to run our test. So you have to click build now to run your test and you will see this new build being triggered. So if I click on this um, circle over here, you will see all the steps. So in my case, it's pulling up all the data from our, um, my GitHub URL over here. So once it pulls up, now it's trying to run the test. So it's doing npm install. All the packages have been installed here. Now, if you notice here, it's trying to run the test in browser stack. So this is actually running in Chrome and Firefox. And there you go. It successfully ran the test. Perfect. So I'm gonna go here. And if you see this icon, which says success. So the tests are ran. Now, if I head over to Jenkins here and just reload, oops, sorry, browser stack. And if I reload here, and if you notice here, a few seconds ago, my test just ran. So I can click on this and I can same thing. I can see all my tests over here. Perfect. So this is good. Uh, what we want now is to be able to see reports in Jenkins along with uh, the report that you were seeing in browser stack. We want to be able to see similar report in Jenkins too. So let's set that up. So I'm going to click on our workspace here first. And then if you notice, we have this report folder which gets generated when we run our test. And this is the JUnit report folder. And we have this reporter over here. So what we will do is go to our configuration and I'm gonna scroll all the way at the bottom and in our post build action, I'm gonna click on publish JUnit test result report. Here we're gonna provide the path to our XML file. So we can do that by saying report slash star dot XML. And once you do that, um, okay, so if you notice it's saying that we are getting this error because it cannot find so it found the report folder, but it cannot find XML file in it. And I think that's because um, if I open up our workspace again and go to report, oh, that's because our report is in .log format, not in the .xml format. So we can actually change that. So what I'm gonna do is go back to our test. And over here, we have to change the output file, uh, file format. So this can be done by just adding output file format. By the way, I've got I've seen this error before. That's why I'm, I know we have to do this. 
Um, for you, you might have to probably Google it if it's the first time you found it. But in this case, I'll show you how to fix this. So you'll do, you'll basically do output file format, create a function, um, and I think you have to provide options here. And then just say which file format you wanted to return it to. So I'll say, for example, uh, return, and then I'm gonna do results.xml. So what it will do is every time it will generate a report, it's gonna print it in results.xml. Um, there's one caveat here though, since if you notice, if we're running our test on multiple browsers, it generates two different report. So over here, if I click on the first one, well, in this scenario, we don't have any uh, detail there, but most likely this will be a, like a Chrome reporter. This would be Firefox. You might have other ones for IE and other browsers. So what we want to do is for it to generate a unique file every time. So if I just pass this, what will happen is one browser will override the report for the other browser. So we can just make this unique by um, actually passing in a timestamp. So I can do, let's say pass in new, um, well, I have to change this, new date. So this is just passing in our basic timestamps and I think I can do get time. Okay, so now this way when I'm going to run my test, um, if I do npx wdau, And our test failed. Uh, what did it fail? Oh, because I forgot to close this here. Okay, so this is results, and then I have this. Okay, I think this is fine now. Let me run the test again. Okay, so this time it's running. And I'm going to stop this again. And this is fine because I stopped the test. And if you notice here, now we are seeing that results uh, dot XML. And then we have the both XML file. We are not seeing anything in there because I stopped the test. Okay, so this is what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is push these changes and then head back to um, our Jenkins to actually integrate this. All right, so I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back in Jenkins. And what I did was the changes we made for that file, I've pushed that. And if I, let's say, reload here, um, you can see that I, can, I added those output file format changes in my uh, repository. Okay, so now we will go back to configuration and then actually add that build step again. The so JUnit test result report, do report slash um, star.xml. We will still still see that error, and that would that's because we haven't built the project yet. So I'm going to save this and then do build now. Now I'm going to click on this. So it's going to do the npm install again, but it would be much quicker because we already installed everything. And then it's going to run a test. You see it's executing two files. Also keep in mind, I'm only running the search.js file just to keep it simple, but we can obviously run all the test files together. Okay, so our test ran, and if you see, it ran in Chrome, Firefox, and it passed both in Chrome and Firefox. And the key thing to notice here, it says recording test results, and this is the JUnit test result it recorded. So if I go back now, and you see here, latest test result, if I click on this, and there you go, we see our JUnit reporting here. So if I click here, I can see the eBay product search, and then I can see all our tests that are passing. Awesome, and same, this is by the way, it ran for Chrome, and then it ran for Firefox also, and then we can see the same details there and it kind of tells you what the steps it took to actually run that test. All right, so I know this was quite basic and it might be a bit complicated if it was the first time you saw how to integrate all of this in Jenkins, but there's a lot more you can do with Jenkins and the way you can set up your jobs and uh, configure your build steps. But this was just a basic overview. At least you get the idea now on how to run your test in Jenkins. All right, so to quickly recap, we installed and configured Jenkins locally, and then we set up a new Jenkins job and added necessary commands to run a test, and also added JUnit reporting with that test. All right, so in our next video, we'll do a wrap up by going over on a high level of what we accomplished in the series. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. That's it for this video, folks. I will see you in the next one.